Welcome. Welcome to Storm Coast Legends. So this is a party based Dungeons and Dragons role playing game. I guess in some ways the spiritual successor to Neverwinter Nights except I, I, that's the role it's supposed to fill I think. It's got extensive uh, Dungeon Master tools so you can make your own adventures and uh, actually one player becomes the Dungeon Master and so you can play with up to five people. One person as a dungeon master, the other four as players. And the dungeon master can uh, take made adventures that either they themselves made or someone else made and adjust things on the fly, uh, t take control over monsters that, or creatures themselves, and do all sorts of things to adjust the adventure on the fly, just like a real dungeon master would in a uh, pen and paper game. But for the purposes of this game, I'm going to be just playing the single player adventure. Uh, you could play that in co-op also, but I'm going to be playing solo because if I got to record this, I have to, you know, I can't count on other people being there all the time. And then it, if I played in co-op, it would have a really erratic recording schedule. Whereas if I'm just playing single player, then I can always count on myself. Uh, in the future, I may mess with the Dungeon Master mode myself, maybe create some adventures, but at the moment, I think it's kind of limited. Uh, like, it's it's good for making straight dungeon crawls, which is fine, but I'd like to make some story-driven adventures, and as of right now, there are, you can't even do branching dialogues. So I can't really do a very good story-driven adventure, at least not one where I give the players any sort of choice. It'd have to be completely linear. And uh, But hopefully that's stuff that they add in the future. Anyway, I've uh, rattled on enough, so let's just dive right into the the single-player, well, doesn't have to be single-player, but the, the campaign. Alright, so i got to make my character. Alright, so we have a selection of a few races. Sadly, this game only comes with the really, really core races right now. Uh, hopefully in an expansion they add some races. Right now there's humans, elves, dwarves, halflings, half-elves. That's it. The, basically the most bare essentials. Hopefully they add orcs, or at least half-orcs in the future. Possibly things like tieflings, drow, even though I'm not a fan of elves in general. But it is what it is. Uh, character classes, paladin, ranger, fighter, cleric, rogue, wizard. Again, pretty bare cupboard, but it's enough to get started with. I, I, I imagine a lot of stuff is going to get added in, uh, expansions. Alright, so what kind of character? Uh, I have a tendency towards playing fighter type characters. In my old, uh, pen and paper days, I used to play fighters most often. Not exclusively, but most often. But I don't think I'm going to play a fighter here. I played a barbarian for uh, Pillars of Eternity. Let's play something a little bit different. I can't see myself playing a wizard, though. I just I never liked playing characters that are that squishy. So, cleric sounds good. All right. Um... Well, if I'm a human, human can be a, really anything. Um, extremely adaptable. There's no chance I'm playing an elf because I hate elves. Um, I won't even play a half elf. Although I suppose a half elf is only half as disgusting as an elf. A dwarf. I could do with a dwarf. Dwarf could work for cleric. 
Um, I'm going to be hardy and take some damage, which I think is important for for a cleric because, well, cleric's going to be your primary healer. But that doesn't do you any good if you're unconscious or dead. So being able to take some damage is a bonus. Plus, clerics can fight. I'm going to be as good as a, a fighter in frontline combat, but they can get in there and mix it up, which I like to do. All right, so sub races. We have gold dwarf and shield dwarf. Gold dwarf, I get. As a gold dwarf, you have keen senses, deep intuition, and remarkable resilience. Plus two constitution, plus one wisdom. Damage resistant poison, racial bonus, uh, dwarven toughness, and proficiencies with battle axe and hand axe. On top of the proficiencies I get as a cleric, just cloth, light, medium shields, and simple weapons. Alright, and Shield Dwarf. As a Shield Dwarf, you're strong and hardy, accustomed to the difficult, to difficult life and rugged terrain. Plus the Constitution, plus two Strength, Resistance, Poison, Battle Axe, Hand Axe, Light and Medium Armors. Okay. Well, Light and Medium Armors are already covered by Cleric's uh, proficiencies. So not getting that as a Gold Dwarf isn't a big deal, because I get those out anyway. Um, Shield Dwarf gets plus two. So the difference, the main difference is basically, uh, Shield Dwarves get plus two constitution and strength, while Gold Dwarves get plus two constitution plus one wisdom, but they also get Dwarven toughness, whatever that is. It would be nice if I could mouse over it and get a pop-up. Um, obviously Shield Dwarves get an extra ability um, score bonus. I get plus two plus two while a gold dwarf gets plus two plus one, but the gold dwarf's plus one to wisdom suits my character more than the extra strength since I'm a cleric and I'm gonna, I'm gonna want as high a wisdom as possible, or at least that's my um, primary stat that determines how many spells I can wield and stuff. Well, I'll be honest, I'm not, this is 5th edition rules, and I'm not that familiar with 5th edition rules. I, it's been a long, long, long time since I played pen. The days that when I played pen and paper, we played 2nd edition. That's how long ago that was. So, I don't know, I mean, D&D is D&D, but it's changed a while since then, so. Anyway, I'm gonna stick with Gold War. Let's make a mail. Kind of a dwarf doesn't have a beard. That just seems wrong. But hopefully I'll be able to adjust that. Alright, so let's see, background. Oh, I get some more bonuses and starting gold and passive bonuses. Okay, so there's gladiator. Plus one strength, plus 50%. Bonus experience when defeating beasts, plus one to hit and damage versus beasts. Guild artisan, plus one intelligence. They get some healing potions and scrolls. Hermit, plus one wisdom, that would be nice. Plus two to radiant, necrotic, and psychic damage dealt. Minus two radiant, necrotic, and psychic damage taken. So if I wanted to be more of an offensive, spell-minded cleric, this would be probably pretty good. Um, Radiant, I'd imagine they'd be like light spells, maybe? Necrotic, uh, necromancy, and psychic damage. Mind-affecting spells, I guess. Uh, that's a possibility right there. I start with only five gold, but that's okay. I'd rather have... Um, Ability bonuses than starting gold. Knight, plus one to strength, plus one to physical damage. It's great for a fighter. Noble, they don't get any starting stat bonuses, but they get 800 gold. Outlander, 
Plus one constitution, negative two to all physical damage taken. That makes you pretty hardy. That is very useful, actually. Pirate, plus one dexterity, minus one to thunder, lightning, and cold damage taken. healing spells or like using a healing item like bandages and stuff. Probably both. It says all healing given. Charlatan. Criminal. Good for a thief. Entertainer. Also good for a thief. Folk hero. Great for like a paladin. And we're back to gladiator. So, it's, gonna, it's down to Acolyte or Hermit for me. Hermit, I get the bonus damage and I take less damage from spells. Acolyte, I get plus three dog healing given and I get some scrolls to start with. Slightly more gold. Both useful. I think I'm going to go Hermit. I like the bonus damage and the damage resistance to spell types. I think that'll come in useful. Bonus healing would too, but okay. Let's move on. Huh? Zoom in on his face? Oh, I can't. I can't tilt the camera up and down, but at least I can zoom in and turn. Oh. Let's have him be scarred up a little bit. I want to go scarred or do I want to go old man? His face has seen many trials. I'd be good for if I was making like a later level character. This would actually be too, but... Hmm. Right, let's give him the old man face. His face has aged beyond his years. Right, hair color. So that's like a dark brown, jet black. Dark brown will work for me. I've got hairstyles. Bald. Long hair. This 
faux hawk. Of course, they have to have a faux hawk. Sure. Long and braided. That seems the most dwarven. Facial hair. All right, thank you. Can't have an unbearded dwarf man. That that that's just wrong. There we go. Nice, nice. Some beard technology right there. Ah, there we go. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's the front runner so far. Nice full beard. That's pretty hermit like. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's some quality braiding right there. Ooh, nice. Kinda maybe a little too styled for a hermit, but then again, I guess a hermit doesn't mean he doesn't have to be like dirty and have twigs in his beard and stuff. He could be a hermit that, you know, uh, likes to take care of himself, like a metrosexual hermit or something. I like the single braid right there. I think I'm, we're going to go with this. All right, eyes. Eye color. <laughs> nice. Height. Make him squint or wide eyed. Make him a little squinty. Eye angle. Uh, droopy eyes or hardcore. Well, it actually doesn't go that high. Is... Let's go up there. Eye size. Little teeny mini eyes, giant anime eyes. That's good. Eye spacing. <laughs> I can make him look like a, some kind of fish person. Well, let's not do that. If this was same throw, I'd probably make a freaky looking character. All right. Brow depth. Depth, I'm probably going to want to look at this end. Whoa. That's some caveman stuff right there. Alright, let's go. Jutting out a little bit. Big ol' schnoz. Little teeny weeny nose. That doesn't seem right for a dwarf. Dwarf's gotta have a pretty big nose. Well, I'll give him a big ol' schnoz. Not maximum schnoz, but big ol' schnoz. Nose depth. Damn! Sticking way up. Pinocchio style. Flatten. Dude was a boxer. Got punched in the nose a bunch of times. There. Nose width. Wow. Woo. Man, he'd be breathing up some oxygen with that. Again, big old schnoz. Not maximum schnoz, but big old schnoz. Let's see, bridge depth. Bridge width. Cheeks and jaw. Cheek width. All gaunt. Super fat. 
Nice. Nice. Maybe not quite that extreme. See, this is regular. Let's give them a little extra there. There we go. A little extra meat on the bones. Cheek height. Wow, I could make him super droopy old man. Let's make him a little more old man. There we go. Droopy. Jaw width. I don't think I'm going to really see that because of the beard. Well, okay. It, it makes a difference in where the beard starts, I guess. There we go. Neck width. I'm never going to see that underneath all this hair and beard, so I could, I can mess with this slider. Oh, it does make a difference in the cheeks a little bit. Chin up. Oh, okay, this will make a difference in where this starts. That works. Lips and ears, well, the ears you're never going to see. And I can mess with the air angle all I want. Oh, you can actually see it if I put it all the way out. His ears are sticking out, but let's not do that. Lip fullness. Oh. Can I give him Angelina Jolie lips? Can't see him completely under the mustache in that, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Giant ass lip. Uh, that's a pretty big lip right there. I mean, not full Angelina. That's like a... 70% Angelina Jolie right there. Alright. Ah. Sweet. Weapons and armor. Well, I have battle axe skill. He's a dwarf, so he's going to be using a hammer or an axe. So. Let's go with a battle axe. There we go. I don't suppose I could also give him, like, a crossbow or something. Put that in this pack and be like, hey, he's also got a ranged weapon, because sometimes you want to shoot a fool. No. Uh, it's starting equipment, so I don't expect to have a bunch. I got uh, armor. Scale Kairos. Go leather. Much less armor, but it doesn't have a max dexterity bonus. Off robes. I'm gonna have him wearing armor. I don't expect to have a super high. Um, simple boots or medium boots, they don't really make any difference in terms of um, armor value. All right, let's see. Got a okay, Let me get at least up to sixteen. I got like twenty more points. Constitution. Let's see. I don't want to be a complete dumbass. Good. Uh, I can't get above seventeen to start with. That's a bummer. Why? Well, I have I have three points. I get. Rid of other stuff, uh, just won't let me go above 17 no matter what. Now, I know in some older versions of, um, some versions of D&D, &D, Charisma is used 
to measure like when you're doing a turn undead into how many undead you can affect with it. I'm not sure if that's how it works in this game or, or in 5th edition. Probably go down to 16 because that's three points. That costs me a lot. I could get more strength. And I could get more constitution for that. Get myself up to 15 there. More hardy. Could lower this one more point. Won't give me enough to get this up to. I'd have to go down two points to get this up to 16. Uh, that seems like pretty reasonable stats. I have one more point to, s to spend, so I put in constitution. Put it into wisdom if I could, but. Three. All right, ability points. What do we got? Divine. Divine abilities represent the power of the gods channeled directly through their followers. They involve such miracles as fire from thin air, pillars of flame shooting up from the ground, and even the power to split the very earth itself. Alright, so if I want to be doing flame strikes, this is where it's all about. This does fire damage. I kind of like to... Okay, I get this by default. I already have this ability. Okay, so I can produce frame. It's a cantrip. Conjures a flickering flame in the caster's hand, which is quickly hurled at an enemy in range. Two second cooldown. Okay, so I can just spam this. So if I want to be ranged, I can sit there and just hurl little dinky bolts of fire. Okay, good to know. Divine Strike. Ah, oh, this does Radiant Damage. Now, this is what I'm talking about here, because I get the bonuses to, to, to Radiant Damage. So I probably want to um, concentrate on spells that do Radiant, Necrotic, or Psychic Damage. Here, Healing Word. All right, well, Righteous Champion. Champions who fight in the name of their gods are imbued with, the, with a bit of that god's power, enough to strike down their enemies with divine righteousness and to send the foulest of enemies running away in fear. So this looks like I have. I have Divine Strike. It's a cantrip attack. Okay, cool. Melee. Infuses the caster's weapon with divine energy with each strike. When the caster hits a creature with this attack, the attack deals 5 to 11 radiant damage. Is that on top of my weapon damage, or instead of my weapon damage? Probably instead of, because it would have said additional. Wow, I could do a lot of damage at high level. And this I could get spiritual weapon, conjures a spectral hammer that hovers within range, and okay, cool. Healing Word. Turn on dead. Okay. Light. Clerics of Light promote the ideals of rebirth and renewal, truth, vigilance, and beauty, which the gods they follow represent. While most of these abilities focus on healing the injured, the power of light can also be powerful weapon against the servants of darkness. The like, yeah, Sacred Flame. Reaves a chosen target in flame like radiance. The target must succeed on a DC 13 dexterity saving throw or to take 2 to 18 radiant. Strike. Nine to 17 or half as much if they take a, make a saving throw. Cure wounds. Almost certainly gonna take that. I'll take, cost me one point. Bless, like, chief among the divine servants' duties is to grant salvation and aid to others. For a variety of blessings and chants, these heroes can bolster their allies, restoring the curse, restore the curse and injured, and bring hope to those in need of aid. Okay. 
less. Here we have aid, temporary boost, frustration, cleanses of negative effects. Okay, useful. War. Holy champions who follow the gods of war excel in battle and inspire those around them. Almost exclusively offensive in nature, war abilities focus on dealing massive amounts of divine damage, smiting one's enemies on the battlefield with righteous fury. Divine smite. Can't do that until level 2, though. Infuses a weapon with divine energy for a single attack, dealing 6 to 24 radiant damage. Pulse, here, Crusader's Mantle, Protection, regardless of their class, heroes that are of true heart seek above all else to protect and defend their allies and those who cannot fend for themselves. Protection abilities focus on the ability to close quickly with enemies and defend against the strongest of attacks. Shield Bash. Nice! 5 to 14 bludgeoning damage and stunning them for 4 seconds. I think I'm going to get that. Cost me 1 point. Right. Oh, Marshall. There's more. Victorious Surge. Strikes a foe with vic victorious fervor, dealing 5 to 16 slashing damage. Performing this attack will store 6 to 8 hit points. Ooh! That's useful. That is like a draining attack. Nice. Flying Foe. Hurls a spear attached to chain to an enemy. On a hit, target takes 4 to 11 piercing damage and is pulled towards the user. Okay. Now these are my proficiencies. I'm not to use a quarter staff, short spear. Club, mace, great club, hand axe, battle axe, don't know how to use a great axe, don't particularly want to use a hand, a great axe. Alright, and back to the beginning. Alright, so, maybe I want to do this shield bash. That is a useful ability, but. That only leaves me with one point, which I'll most likely put into this Cure Wounds. It leaves me with nothing. There's another heal. It'd be useful since when one's on cooldown, this has a cooldown of what? 30 seconds, this one has a cooldown of 20 seconds. So it would give me another heal to cast while one's up cooled up. Shield Bash is so useful though, stunning the target. Would I rather have that or this Victorious Surge, which gives me extra damage and restores some of my hit points? That's like a heal itself, of course, only on me. Search. It's a search ability. I don't have that, huh? Well, that's usually something I'll have a um, rogue do. All right, let's just stick with shield bash and the heal. Okay, portrait. We get different angles and backgrounds. I like this one. All right, voices. Might I have a moment of your time? Whoa, no, that is a terrible voice Bridget. for a dwarf. Yeah, that would work. Yes. Ish. Come here a second. Yes. Well met. <laughs> no, no. Of course. Excuse me. Hi. Come here a second. Come here a second. 
We're gonna go with puckish. I can change my alignment, huh? We're going to go chaotic good. He's good hearted, but doesn't particularly care for laws and such. Determines on his own by following whatever God uh, and by the laws of whatever God he follows, what he feels is right. Maybe with a little bit of, um, how should I say, be flexible in the laws of the gods. rather than strictly adhering to a dogma to the letter of the word. Azoth, the high one, mainly god of wizards. Thank you, Shantia, great mother. Orlon. Don't matter. Now yeah, let's just go with the dwarf guy. I gotta give him a name. Let's see. Dragon. I want to give him a last name. Let's just stick with Bregan. I can't think of anything right now. You will not be able to edit this character once you complete yes. Normal difficulty. Let's see settings. Solo. Normal difficulty. Normal. Okay, good.
Legends tell that after the time of troubles, the elven goddess Sehanin Moonbow wept for those divine souls that fell in the God's War. From her eyes fell the Moon Tear, a relic said to contain a moat of Sehanin's divine power. The Moon Tear was hidden by the elves, but not forgotten. A century ago, two brothers, one gentle and scholarly, the other brash and courageous, sought to find the lost relic. They founded an adventuring guild called the Order of the Burning Dawn and sealed their purpose with an oath to find the Moon Tear and use it to bring light to a world filled with darkness. Not long after they sealed the pact, both brothers were lost and the guild's original purpose was lost with them. Today, the guild offers equipment, shelter, and paying work for adventurers looking to do a little good while they make a little coin. You are one of the Burning Dawn's newer recruits, charged with escorting a small merchant caravan along the high road between the city of Neverwinter and the lawless town of Luskan. It has been an easy journey thus far, aside from the vicious nightmares that have plagued your sleeping mind since the caravan left the city. Bad dreams are common on missions fraught with danger. But you've never had nightmares quite like this. Alright, night on the road. You and your guildmates have set up camp along the high road, where you are escorting a merchant caravan from Neverwinter to Luskin. As you lay down the rest, however, you're peaceful... Hey, get up! The guild hall's under attack! That would've been cool if they gave me a chance to read that. Hey, get up! Guild hall's under attack. Who's attacking no us? No armored knights of some kind. Something's different about them. I'm hoping someone else knows more. Bellamy is calling for our help. Grab your equipment and head downstairs now. Let's go now. Now. Left click on the ground to move in that direction. Ah, so this is a tutorial section. Perfect. Hopefully, this isn't very long. We'll run through this tutorial and then end the episode after that. It's been 40 minutes. Yeah. Sorry I took so long with character creation. I can't help myself. Ah, no screen edge scrolling. God, that's going to drive me nuts. I hope there's an option for that. Alright, I can use the arrow keys. Rotate with Q and E or hold it down on that. Okay. I can also hold down the middle mouse button. Alright. Anything in this room? I can't change the camera angle, but I can't rotate. So look, there's anything in. Any time. The quest log. The, the, With know, pleasure. Yeah, I know what a quest log is. I'm on it. I'm on it. This ain't my first rodeo. Sure. Sure. Is this like a dream sequence? This is probably the nightmare I was having that the. Can do. Um. A little blurb described during the loading Anytime. screen that it didn't completely give me a chance to read. With pleasure. I'm on it. I'm on it. Sure. Sure. That room's all on fire. Can do. Can do. Anytime. Anytime. Hold the Alt key to highlight any interactive items in the area. Click on objects, yada yada yada. Okay. Right, so there's this chest and this armor. With pleasure. With pleasure. Finder keepers. Ah, my gear. Very good. Oh. Let's see what we have. Battle axe. My boots. Don't want to get splinters in my feet. Shield bash without a shield. And some potions of healing. Restoration healers kit. Our own abilities. Okay, 
phase, more than one tool. Gotcha. Alright, so this switches between my attack for the battle axe, or I can do this cantrip. Gotcha. Let's see what's in this armor. I'm on it. I'm on it. Healing, very good. Potions and scrolls are automatically added to the quick bar. This behavior can be disabled from the options menu. Yes, please. Quick interactive, shadow, disable subtitles, side home, uh, auto add consumables to quick bar. Nope. Auto remove, auto add consumables from quick bar. This. Oh, once the consumable count reaches zero. Right. No, I don't want. Mm. Let's leave it as is for default network match visibility, solo, friends, public. This is solo for this. Ah, uh, doesn't look like there's any way to add um, screen edge scrolling. That's a bummer. Okay. Sure. Sure. Can do. Can do. Report, soldier. I've begun a search of this floor, sir. I'll guard the stairwell. There must be no survivors. Anytime. Anytime. Ah, oh, there's a guy in here. The vine strike his ass. You will pay. With pleasure. With pleasure. Heal myself up. Very much. I'm on it. Hit the space bar to pause on pause during battle. Sure. Can do. And the camera by holding and dragging with the middle mouse button. This is useful for scouting ahead. Yes, it would be nice if I could screen edge pan, but oh well. Double clicking on a party member, his or her portrait, recenters the view and follows that character. You're rank. You're right. Anytime. Ah, so the camera will automatically move. Okay. With pleasure. With pleasure. Let's shield bash this dumbass. Well, they don't look friendly. Uh, it didn't work because he didn't you get stunned. Hey. I suppose it has to actually. Is it time hit. for a rest yet? Stairs. There's Bellamy. Glad you could make it, sleepyhead. It's about time you joined us. Where are these All people? I know is that they caught us unawares. They're going to bring the whole building down around us. Is anyone else still There weren't a lot of people here to begin with, thank the gods. Ah, I have a whole party. Oh! These guys just kind of appeared out of nowhere. Well, it is a dream sequence. So. All right. Need something? Need something? Ready. What can I do for you? Let's do, Let's do this. I'm gonna attack this guy. <laughs> What you need. No! What is it? Kill. You take care of the archer. Everybody else. Yeah, boss. Yeah, boss. Concentrate on this melee character. Yes. Yes. You will. We must get out there, discover what's going on, and put a stop to it. Objections? Let's do it. Aye. 
I'm in. I'm in. For the dawn! I'm on it. I'm on it. Oh, we're not leaving the that way. By the gods! I guess we're not getting out that way. Good idea. The entrance to the basement is hidden. Some kind of concealment spell. Grab the ritual skull from that chest so we can get out of here. Ritual skull? Where the hell are we? Sure. Well, this is a dream sequence. Can do. Anytime. Alright, With pleasure. Lock picking. So, which one of these characters is a rogue? I'm a cleric. Bellamy is a fighter. Nettie is a rogue. Maybe I can help. I'm on it. I'm on it. Oh, I can change this to divine strike. Six to twelve, two to eight slash. I can't make this better. It's not divine strike. Anyway, ritual brazier. Skull Hidden trap door. Very good. Let's put Bellamy out front. He's okay. a fighter, so it makes the most sense. Press them to open your map. Okay. All right. All right. Anything. You're here. Do you know what's happening? Guildhall's under attack. Under attack? That doesn't sound good. We should stay together until we can figure this all out. Keep your eyes open. There are hidden traps in this area. Alright, so I was, I'm dreaming I'm in the guild hall. Okay. Keep your eye open for traps. Yes. That sounds like a job for a rogue. So let's get Nettie up front. Indeed. Let's go. Good. Of course. Indeed. Let's go. Good. Yes, I know about the searchability. I'm already using it. I'm way ahead of you there, tutorial. This isn't my let's first. Go role-playing game good of course this companions not directly under your control will automatically follow and fight tactically as needed clicking the icon below and to the right of the character portrait toggles this behavior parties following and tactics are out gotcha partial party selected full party selected. what gotcha all right so this toggles the ai this toggles group select Good to know. Indeed. Let's go. Good. Aha! The trap. It's almost as if it was placed there specifically to teach me about traps. As in some sort of tutorial. Hmm. Of course. It's probably Indeed. gonna seeing as this is a tutorial, it'll probably be the only trap, but I'll keep Netty out front anyway. Safer that way. Chalk and turquoise. Thank you. Good. Good. Of course. Indeed. Oh, oh! Damn! I always say that out, Liv Jarhild. 
I'm sad to see I was right. Oh man, Jarho had a bad day. Good thing this is only a dream sequence. Oh man. Let's go. Let's go. Good. Fill these potions and scrolls reside in the quick bar. Yep, yeah, I know. Of course. Indeed. Let's go. Some classes have cantrips available. The quick bar displays the default weapon set and the active cantrip. Characters like Gil clicking on either slot makes the weapon or cantrip as default. Yes, I figured that out on my own. Thank you. What, what? cantrips does he have? He's got the divine strike like I do. And sacred flame. And produce flame. Divine strike it is. What do you need? Good. Of course. Mm hmm. Not an enemy. Indeed. And another one. All right. Let's get Bellamy yes. up front. Yes. He's got. Man, this gives him a bonus, right? Man, this shout calls out orders to nearby ally. Grant the combat bonuses. Plus one to hit and damage for an extra six seconds. Well, I'm gonna have him do that on himself. Die! Okay. okay. This fool is gonna go down, but quick. Here we go! No! Characters attack the same target, now but oh well. I'm not gonna have him move again. So You're right. Okay. You're right. S split between these two. Yeah. <laughs> this is tutorial, so I You're expect cold? these fights to be childishly easy, so making tactical mistakes isn't gonna be the worst thing in the world. You will pay! Hey. Ah. No! Need yes. some protection! Make good use of their party during challenging battles, pal pause and cycle through members, strategically use. Yes, that's good advice. Not necessary here in a tutorial, but good advice what can nonetheless. I do Let's go. What do we have here? We have a mage and two knights. Well, that mage needs to go down. Pronto. Yes. 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 She have like thrown daggers or something? As a matter of fact, there it is, hidden dagger. Or also weighted dagger to target. And it increases their cooldowns. That is perfect against mages. Need something? Need something? Let's do this. Let's do this. What you need? Throw some flame. Ah, oh, may shield himself or herself. Is that? Ah, uh, that's a. Uh, that is a lady mage. Mage needs to die. Very good. Oh, there's more of them coming. Right. Yeah, boss. Everybody on this dumbass. We got an archer. Yes. Yes. Archer's gonna get taken out. Oh, Arnax is doing me a favor by keeping this guy busy too. here Doesn't look like it what ah 
cool. My characters automatically use their healing spells Good. after battle to heal up. That is useful. Of course. That is a nice um convenience. Ah, oh, Bren. Man, having oh. a bad day. Is that Bren? He murdered my sister. You die now, you heartless bastards! Indeed. Let's go. Oh, maybe stop her. Maybe I can help. Why don't you heal her up, man? What's up with that? Good. Maybe it only heals them up to a certain point, like 90% or 80%, and after that it's like, okay, you're good. Of course. Prefer to heal them up to 100% personal. Ooh. That is a unfriendly Good. looking ring of fire. Of course. Indeed. Got some Eye of Sauron going on here. What is? Let's go. That is not friendly. Why suffer an invasion, when mortal fools march straight to me? You die now, demon! <laughs> such a large voice for such a small creature. Don't you see that we are on the same side? Well, it's a good thing this is a dream sequence, because that looks like the kind of creature that a level 1 character should not be going up against. How are we on the same side? So impatient, you will see. Play a role, mortal, and all will become clear. Stop the chatter and fight. Of course. You're obviously here to die. I shall not disappoint. You rang. The High Road. The inland trade route known as the High Road connects Waterdeep in the south to Luskin in the north, passing through Neverwinter and Port Last along the way. On the trip up from Neverwinter, this portion of the High Road veers away from the coast to a small set of craggy hills. Still about a day's ride to Luskin for most ah, caravaneers. Ah, you're finally awake. You were scaring the horses. You were thrashing around in your sleep. The trail boss thought you were possessed. Jarhild, it's good to see you alive. I had a strange dream. The world was coming to an end. You too. Bellamy said he had the same dream I did. But I figured that damned halfling was just messing with me like he always does. Why did we have to bring Bellamy along again? I know. I asked myself the same question at least four times a day. Full of jokes he is, but he can't take it as well as he dishes it out. He's like an angry rabbit, that one, all hissing and gnashing of teeth when you rub him the wrong way. But he's a damn good soldier, and I'm glad to have him here. That nightmare I had makes me think we might be needing his blades in the coming days. Sounds like we all had terrible nightmares. Aye, something to mention to Palan when we get to the guild house in Luskin. Maybe he'll give us a foul taste and purple concoction that bubbles loudly and doesn't do much else. Nightmares aside, we got work to do. Got to find that fool halfling and get this caravan packed up and ready to move to Luskin. What do we have left to the do? The merchants are breaking camp as we speak. Most wagons are tied up and ready to go. We got a few stragglers that might need a hand getting ready. Bellamy went up ahead to scout the road. Haven't heard from him in a little while. He was cranky with a headache when he left, so I'm guessing he picked a fight with one of the trail scouts up there. A homie would pick a fight with a wall if he thought it was in his way. Aye, so you know my concern then. Maybe go up ahead along the road and see if you can find him. We ain't got all day, and if he manages to hurt someone, it ain't coming out of my share. 
All right, looks like we're into the game proper. So this looks like a good place to leave off. And uh, we'll pick up here and start actual adventuring next time.